step of change, um, which is particularly relevant when you're in a turnaround situation. We all know about break even, don't we? We don't, and when I mean break even, I mean, let's draw a chart. Definition of break even is first of all, we have our fixed costs. Then we have our variable costs, which are your cost of sales. If you're in manufacturing, then that will be materials, um, like your distribution, and it may include some of your, your labour, although these days labour tends to be semi fixed. So we have those two. Then we have our sales, and there's our sales line. All we need there is our break even. And the more we can increase our sales whilst maintaining everything else, the wider our margin becomes. Now, the trick in any business, particularly the turnaround, is to get this break even as low as you can. We can do that, of course, by reducing our fixed costs and by reducing our variable costs and by increasing our sales. And I call it the 10% rule. So imagine if it could be 10%, it could be 5%. You could increase all your costs by 10% or 5% and all your sales by 5 or 10%. You could do that. Imagine the level of margin that you would achieve. It would be massive. So it's not a big number and that is a, a target that I think <clears throat> is worth, worth looking at. It might be 5%, it might be even less than that, 2.5%. So it's a question of doing both sales and costs, getting both of those down. And <clears throat> when we're talking about change, how do we prevent change in a turnaround situation? And many companies will embark upon what is called continuous improvement. This is incremental improvement, it's gradual, it's steady, and as we know, companies have got to continue to improve, sometimes just to survive. But many companies do have a, a continuous improvement um, policy, strategy within their organisation, which is good. So we've got our continuous improvement there, the continuous improvement program is, is doing, doing very, very well. But <clears throat> what we don't know is what the competitors are doing. It could well be that our competitors are doing that. And again, what is happening here is this gap is increasing. So the more we continue upon our continuous improvement program, the greater the gap, gap becomes between our competitors and what is known as best practice. Step change means that what we actually need to do is not continue along that path, but make what it says a step change. And that is more dramatic action. And it goes back to what I was saying about the 10% rule. It means implementing measures that we can install quickly, um, fairly rapidly, um, to effect that step change. And that might be a combination of of downsizing and restructuring. So for example, um, one organisation I was involved with, uh, we needed to do this, make a step change. We had problems and the company was grumbling along, making a small profit one month, a small loss the next month. So what I did there was to walk around the factory, to manufacturer, identify that something like 47% of the products were made every week and could be shipped every week. We created in theory, a standard product line, didn't move any machines. I then negotiated with the steel suppliers to get extra credit, an extra credit line, which we did at 50,000 pounds. For 50,000 pounds of steel, I had 100% markup. I could sell those for 100,000 pounds of sales value. We agreed on that. We installed the, um, the standard product line. I got my 50,000 pounds of credit. We produced, shipped within the week, drew down on invoice discount in the hundred thousand pounds less our, our, our fee on that and use the same money to then to fund the following week that one exercise actually saved that particular company so it's measures like that which i'll go on to in another um another session uh, that we need to implement to make this step change so step change is making it radical it's doing it today it isn't doing it now <clears throat>